Next, we head on over to the New York City borough of Queens, to John F. Kennedy International Airport, where the legendary Lufthansa Airlines robbery took place. One New York Mafia family immortalized in one of the best mob films ever made were the Lucchese's. The movie? Martin Scorsese's epic 1990 film, Goodfellas. For this, we head on over to JFK International Airport, where the legendary Lufthansa Airlines robbery took place. The December 11th, 1978 Lufthansa heist, as it is known, was probably the most infamous caper in U.S. history. At John F. Kennedy International Airport, associates of New York City's Lucchese crime family netted nearly $6 million, or $22.5 million today, in cash and jewels. Almost none of the take was recovered, and only one person served time. Three of the key mobsters involved were Jimmy the Gent Burke, Henry Hill, and Tommy DeSimone. In Goodfellas, Jimmy Burke was played by Robert De Niro as Jimmy Conway. Tommy DeSimone was played by Joe Pesci as Tommy DeVito, and Henry Hill was played by Ray Liotta as Henry Hill. Paul Vario, played by Paul Sorvino, was the capo who ran the street crew. Jimmy Burke's crew knew JFK very well. Whenever they needed easy cash, the airport was an easy mark. His crew regularly hijacked trucks from JFK, often taking two or three trucks a week filled with TVs, clothes, or food. When Burke and Hill had assembled their team for the Lufthansa heist and were ready to go, they pulled a black van up to the cargo area around 3 a.m. in the early morning of December 11, 1978. The entire heist took little more than an hour. However, there was one major screw-up. The getaway driver Parnell Stephen Stax Edwards, played by Samuel L. Jackson in Goodfellas, got drunk and left the van parked illegally on the street in Canossie, Brooklyn, where it was found by police two days later with his fingerprints and footprint in the interior. Burke decided to cut the ties between Edwards and his crew, and the driver became the first suspect in the crime to be murdered. It was Tommy DeSimone, a longtime friend of Edwards, that was given the job. Tommy didn't want to do it. He complained to his boss, Paul Vario, that him and Edwards go back a long ways and that Tommy was the only person on earth Edwards trusted. But when you're given an order to kill, you don't say no. Tommy went to Edwards' hideout and put five bullets in his skull. Sorry, pal. I hope it didn't hurt. Sooner or later, I'll see you in heaven or hell. Wherever you're going... I'm sure that's where I'll be going. That's exactly what DeSimone said to his friend after murdering him. Tommy soon joined him. Jimmy Burke ended up becoming so paranoid that he had almost everyone involved killed, except John Gotti, who also played a role in the heist, and Henry Hill, who would end up cooperating with the FBI and testifying against Burke. Burke would be convicted of separate charges unrelated to the robbery and spend the rest of his life in prison dying in 1996. Hill entered the FBI Witness Protection Program and rarely set foot in New York City for fear of being murdered. As far as Tommy DeSimone goes, it actually wasn't revealed until Henry Hill's 2015 book, The Lufthansa Heist, came out that it was John Gotti who personally killed DeSimone. This was the first time the details of Gotti's role in the death of the 28-year-old psychopath were revealed. You see, at the time, Henry Hill was collaborating on Wise Guy, the 1986 book that Goodfellas was based on. Gotti had risen to become godfather of the Gambino family after the slaying of Paul Castellano in front of Sparks Steakhouse. Hill was afraid that if he revealed the truth about who killed Tommy DeSimone, Gotti would go after him. Henry Hill only revealed the truth after Gotti's death in 2002. So it's for this reason in Goodfellas that you see Tommy being killed in a different scenario than what actually happened. 